Hi, this is the first half of a two-part video on how to get a feel for your data in Stata. So when I bring in a new data set, as I've done here with affairs.dta, which is one of Jeff Woldridge's data sets. So when I bring in a new data set, the first thing that I usually want to see is what are the variables in the data set. So of course I have the variables window up here to get some sense of what the variables are, but to see it a little bit better, I like to see it in the results window. And to do that, I use the command describe, which can just be shortened to the letter D. So if I do D, then I get a description, which gives me the number of observations, number of variables, uh, and also gives me the names of the variables. And if the variables were labeled by whoever was making the data set, then I can see the labels of the data over here too. Variable labels can be handy. So for example, I can see relig here. It's gonna take the value five if the person was said they were very religious, four if they were somewhat, three for slightly, blah, blah, blah. Uh, these can be handy to remind you how the variables were defined. I wouldn't use it as a substitute for ever reading the code book because there can be surprises, uh, but it can be useful for reminding yourself. So that's usually the first step that I like to do. And then the next step after that is I like to see what the data actually looks like. So to do that, I use the command browse. And what browse does is it opens up a new window which contains all the actual values of each variable for each observation. So each row represents an observation. So this is the third observation in the data set. This observation has been given an ID number six by whoever made the data set. You can see male is equal to one, so they're male, they have an age, years married, no kids, and their religiosity was three, which I guess was slightly religious. So this is a handy way to just get a, get a feeling for what are some of the values in your data. The next thing I like to do also is to get some summary statistics about the variables, right? Because it's hard to see what the variables really look like if you have a big data set just by scrolling through it. Uh, so I you do summarize. We already talked about this in another video, uh, but this gives you the mean, standard deviation, minimum and maximum values. And you can use options on this to get more detailed information about some variables. Of course, if I wanted to get even the most detailed information, let's say I was interested in seeing the exact values that N affairs takes. So N affairs is the number of affairs in this data set. Then I can use the command tabulate, which I usually shorten to tab. So I can do tab N affairs. And when I do tab N affairs, it's gonna list all the values that N affairs takes. You can see here, this is the variable label, number of affairs within the last year. So it took the value 0, 1, 2, 3, 7, 12. So you can see 451 observations had no affairs in the last year. That's 75% of the sample. And then you have some people with one, some with two, some with three. 42 people had seven affairs and 38 people had 12 affairs. So this is one of the reasons why you would look through your data is if you had a mistaken idea of what this variable was equal to. So suppose you thought that this was the exact number of affairs which people had had within the last year. This would be a pretty surprising distribution of the data, right? To have 38 people who'd had 12 affairs, but nobody who'd had 11, 10, 9, 8, 13, 14 affairs seems pretty unlikely to me. So this would be a cue that you better go read the codebook more closely so you can get a sense of what this variable actually, how this variable was collected and what the responses actually mean. Of course, another thing that you could do is you could try to get summary statistics by the particular values of a variable. And to do that, you can use the command tabstat. So if I wanted to get average number of affairs by, let's say, I want to do this by rate, by how, much, uh, how highly somebody rates their marriage, this will give me, uh, this breaks down the average number of affairs or average value of n affairs, which is probably not exactly the number of affairs that they had according to how highly they, the respondent rates their marriage. So among people who rate their marriage as very unhappy, you can see that those people, their average value of N affairs was about four. For people who are somewhat unhappy, it was similar. And then by the time you get down to people who have very happy marriages, they're having less than one affair per year on average. 